fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Away! Your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It gives you a swell feeling to know that champions are made, not born. Roy Campanella, sensational catcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers, is an example. Sandlot grade school legion ball, as a lad Roy played them all. Learn to hit, to catch, to throw. And something else the champs all know. A Wheaties breakfast gave him go. Now that Roy's well on his way, it's Wheaties still most every day. Twenty years. That's how long Roy's been sparking up with Wheaties. He picked a winner... There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Look out, pitcher. Roy's at bat. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding through the hills overlooking the tracks at a leisurely pace when the train passed. A short time later, they rounded a turn on the hillside trail and saw a man in the valley picking up scattered mail. The masked man recognized the postmaster. Who's who? Who's 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 Tonto, that's Hank Brogan. Uh, what him doing? Picking up the mail. <laughs> and I mean that literally. Uh? Hank goes to that place beside the track to wait for the mail for Clarksville. Mail bags are tossed to him from the train. Train stopped to give him mail? No, Tonto. Apparently, when the mail was thrown from the train, one of the bags opened. Oh, then mail will fall out. Yes, Hank's picking it up. We'll give him a hand. Come, Scott. Come, Father. But before they reached the bottom of the slope, Hank climbed into his wagon and drove away. The two men were about to pursue him when Tonto's keen eyes rested on a mutilated letter Hank had overlooked. The Lone Ranger and his Indian friend drew rein and dismounted. Who's 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 the masked man picked up the torn envelope. That only part of envelope. Yes, Tonto. It's been cut almost in two. Oh, how that happened? It looks as if it had been run over by the wheels of the train. This was addressed to Pete Perry in Clarksville. Oh, Pete Perry. Him own cafe in Clarksville. Yes, that's right. Marshal Blake in Clarksville suspects that Perry's acquainted with a number of men who should be behind bars. Who sends letter? It's postmarked Circle City. Oh. Himasabi. That looked like paper money in the envelope. It's half of a one peso Mexican bill. Here's part of a letter. Oh. What letter say? Part of it's missing, but what's left indicates that someone named Mucho wants Pete Perry to send him an expert safe cracker. Safe cracker? The cracksman is to identify himself to Mucho by presenting the enclosed banknote. Ah, oh, that means Marshal Blake was right about Pete Perry. It also means that a man named Mucho is planning a robbery. We ride to Clarkville, tell Marshal Blake. No, Tonto, we ride to Circle City. He said to be coming. He's out easy. And what we do there? Mucho is expecting a safe cracker. But Pete Perry not get letter. Him not send crook to Circle City. Mucho doesn't know that. As far as he's concerned, the man who holds the banknote is the cracksman he sent for. We'll not keep him waiting. Monsilla! What's count? After two days of hard travel, the masked man and Tonto drew rein in the vicinity of Circle City. The Lone Ranger removed his mask, guns, and clothing. He disguised his face and donned old clothes and an old gun belt with ordinary weapons and ammunition. As a precaution, in case of questioning by the sheriff. 
He carried a letter from the governor. He went into town alone and rejoined Tonto two hours later. Oh, 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 easy, steady, big fellow. I've learned where to find Mucho, Tonto. He has a ranch five miles east of Circle City. Maybe headquarters the gang. We'll find out. We're going there right now. A short time later, the disguised Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein on a thickly wooded slope. In the rock-studded valley below, they saw Mucho's ranch. This is as far as you go, Tonto. Oh, what you mean? I'm going to the ranch house alone to try to learn Mucho's plans. But that's plenty dangerous, Kimasabi. It might be if I didn't have this banknote to identify me. As soon as he sees it, Mucho will think I'm the safe cracker he's expecting. I'll join you here later. Monsilver! Tonto's face was grim as he watched his friend ride away. The Indian dismounted and took a pair of field glasses from his saddlebag. He adjusted them and studied the buildings in the valley. Tonto was even more concerned when he saw two armed guards stop and challenge his friend. Through the field glasses, he saw the Lone Ranger raise his hands and surrender his guns. Bad. Plenty bad. Him go into outlaw hideout without guns. (laughs) Me think Lone Ranger head for trouble. One of the guards who had disarmed the disguised Lone Ranger took him to the ranch house. They entered the living room where a tall, heavily bearded man sat cleaning a rifle. The guard said, Mucho, his critter claims you sent for him. Who are you, mister? This torn bank note should identify me. Huh? You have the other half. You're the man I'm looking for. Let's see that, Bill. Here. I put it beside my half of this peso note. Yeah. Are you satisfied? They match perfectly. What's this all about, boss? Pete Perry sent this man from Clarksville. He's the safe cracker we've been waiting for, Slim. Oh, yeah? What's your name? Call me Tex. Why do you need a safe cracker? To get these $60,000 in the Wells Fargo vault in Circle City. I cut you in for a tenth of the loot and give you a permanent place in my gang if you do the job right. What about the law in Circle City? Oh, I've been outsmarting Sheriff Wade for a long time. I'm not worried about him now. Slim. Take Tex out to the bunkhouse and see that he meets the gang. Right, Mucho. Come on, Tex. Lead the way. See you later, Tex. Right. Mucho moved to a window and watched as Slim and the newcomer named Tex walked toward the bunkhouse. As he looked after the two men, the door opened softly behind him, and a gunslinger named Shad entered the room. Though Shad was unknown to the authorities, he had committed a number of crimes, including murder. As a practiced law dodger, he was also interested in the newcomer. He pointed toward the bunkhouse and said, So that's the safe cracker Perry sent us, huh? Too bad you weren't here to meet him, Shad. But he'll be back. I'm wondering about his nerve. Nerve? Yeah. How well he'll keep his mouth shut under pressure. Ah, oh, he wouldn't talk. Well, it'll be in a safe side. We better test that arm, Bray, before we turn him loose. Huh? Oh. He hasn't seen me yet. I'll pose as Sheriff Ben Wade from Circle City and arrest him. Oh. Uh, he, he might know Sheriff Wade. But there's one man we can be sure he doesn't know. Yeah, who? Uh, this fellow serve our purpose better than a lawman. Who is he? The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? That's right. Uh, we've all heard of him. Chances are Tex has heard of him, too. Yeah, but you... You dress as the Lone Ranger. Put a mask over your face, have a white horse in the corral, mount him, and... I then... savvy, mucho. That's a good idea. I'd take Tex to town to look over the Wells Fargo building. You wait for us along the trail. I hightail and leave you along with him. That'll give me a chance to ask a lot of questions. I'll soon know whether or not he's to be trusted. In town, Sheriff Ben Wade learned that a suspicious-looking stranger named Tex had been looking for Mucho. The lawman called his two deputies together and asked, Do either of you know where that Tex gent is now? He left town a couple hours ago, Sheriff. Where'd he go? Said he was going to Mucho's place. Why? Boys, we've been trying to get something on Mucho for a long time. We yeah, sure have. That stranger might be able to give us some information. <laughs> We're going to ask him some questions. We might have to go all the way to Mucho's ranch to see him. That's all right with me. Meanwhile, Shad left the valley astride a white horse. With a mask in his pocket, he felt sure he would have no difficulty convincing the newcomer that he was the Lone Ranger. He rode hard to reach the appointed meeting place before Tex and Mucho. Half an hour later... Mucho and the Lone Ranger came out of the ranch house. Tonto saw them head for town. He mounted, intending to follow them. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Get him off, scout. As he rode from the shelter of trees toward the trail his friend had taken, Slim and another lookout named Jawbone saw him. 
Jawbone exclaimed. Hey, Slim, it's a redskin. What's he doing around here? Looks like he's following Tex and the boss. Get this saddle, Jawbone. We'll follow that engine. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. I'm Mel Allen, the fellow who broadcasts the New York Yankee baseball games. Naturally, I'm a little partial toward the Yankees, but I'll tell you this. When the Cleveland Indians come to town, there's one fellow I really keep my eye on, and that's Wheaties champion Al Rosen, living proof that champions are made, not born. You watch Al in batting practice or whipping that ball around with his teammates, and you can tell every move has been grooved by years of practice. Sit down with Al for breakfast, and you'll see where he gets that energy. Al chooses Wheaties. He knows. You don't get on top or stay on top if you're not in top condition. Now, Wheaties are nothing new with Al Rosen. No, sir. He's been eating them 22 years since he was seven. Not off and on either, but right along. Wheaties can help anyone get on his way. After all, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. You can take my word for it. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. There he is, Jawbone. Hey, you, draw rein. Looking over his shoulder, Tonto saw the pursuing outlaws closing in on him. Their guns were drawn. Stop or we'll blow your head off. Hold your head off, my man. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, boy. Hush your hands and keep them high. Why you stop me? You answer the questions, Injun. Who are you? Me not top. What's the idea of following our pals? Speak up. Hey, I know who this redskin is. I've seen him before. What? He's Tonto. The Injun who travels with a lone ranger. A lone ranger? Yeah. He and his masked pal must be wise to us. Right. I'll disarm the redskin. You take him to the ranch and keep him there. What about you? I'll go after the boss and warn him to be on the lookout for the Lone Ranger. Mucho and the disguised Lone Ranger were traveling toward town at a leisurely pace. Nearing the place where he knew Shad would be waiting, Mucho studied the heavy underbrush bordering the trail. Looking for someone, Mucho? Well, I, uh, I'm always a little uneasy when I hit this stretch of trail. Why? The rocks and underbrush around here be a good place for an ambusher to line away. Oh, All right, Mucho, go away. Those are the police. Shad, astride the white horse and wearing a mask, emerged from a place of concealment on the trail ahead. As soon as he saw the disguised outlaw, Mucho wheeled his horse. That masked man looks like the Lone Ranger. I am the Lone Ranger. I'm getting out of here. Get. As Mucho spurred his horse, the animal raced from the trail to the shelter of protecting trees and brush. The Lone Ranger studied the masked man. No use you trying to run away, mister. You didn't stop Mucho. You're the one I want to talk to. So you're the Lone Ranger. That's right. What's your business with me? I want to ask you some questions about that Mucho gent. Why? Because I figure he's a crook. If you've heard anything about me, you know I put a lot of fellas like him behind bars. I've heard of the Lone Ranger, but I've never heard of you. Huh? What's your game? At that moment, Slim raced into view. By using several shortcuts, he hoped to overtake Mucho and warn him about the Lone Ranger. When he saw the masked man on the trail ahead, his worst fears were realized. The Lone Ranger had captured Tex. Grabbing his gun, Slim shouted, I'll get him, Tex! No, no, don't shoot! Shad cried out to identify himself to Slim, but it was too late. The outlaw's bullet struck him. Oh, how oh, oh. Slim, hold your gun. I got him, Tex. I killed the Lone Ranger. He's not the Lone Ranger. But I met his engine pal and he... Hey, look. Three riders coming this way. The sheriff and his deputies. I'm clearing out of here. Stay where you are. Hey, what's the idea of the gun? You stay and take your medicine for shooting this man. You're loco if you think you stopped me with that gun. What? Joe Bone and I took the bullets out of it before we gave it back to you. You can take the blame for shooting that masked man. I'm clearing out for those lawmen get within shooting range. Get up there, come on! As Slim raced from the scene of the ambush, the Lone Ranger broke open his guns. Empty. He just said it before. He was examining Shad when the sheriff and his deputies drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. Get your hands up, mister. You're covered. Sheriff, that's the gent who was asking for Mucho. He's dead. Take his guns. They're empty, Sheriff. Easy, boy. I'll take them anyway. I'll keep them covered. Joe, see about the critter on the ground. Right, Sheriff. Did it? 
Looks like he's hurt bad. He's dead. So you killed him, huh? No. A man named Slim shot him. Slim rode away as soon as he saw you and your deputies. Who's Slim? He works for Mucho. I've got the gent's gun, Sheriff. He was telling the truth. They're both empty. Yeah. Examine them and you'll see they haven't been fired. Never mind giving the orders, mister. We know our jobs. Joe, take the mask off that dead man. Yeah. Hey, this is Shad Martin. Shad Martin? He's top hand on Mucho's ranch. I see. You claim Mucho's man Slim shot him? Yes, he did. Shad was posing as a Lone Ranger. What? Sheriff, if you listen to me, I'll give you information enough to put Mucho and his whole gang behind bars. I'll listen in town at the jail. Now you hit the saddle and come along peaceful. Zeb, put Shad's body on his horse. We'll take it to the coroner's. Right. As the deputy named Zeb moved toward the dead man, the Lone Ranger noticed that the great horse Silver stood between him and the other two lawmen. The gun Shad dropped when he fell from the saddle were on the ground near the disguised Lone Ranger. He shouted, Take them, Silver! <laughs> The mighty Silver understood the command. The sheriff's horse reared to escape the stallion's charge. As the sheriff spilled from the saddle, Joe jumped to the side to escape being trampled. Zeb had been so startled by the unexpected attack that he turned his attention from the prisoner toward his friends. By the time he realized what had happened, the Lone Ranger had Shad's gun. Get your hands up, Zeb. I have no time to argue. Uh, all right. All right, Silver. Steady, big fellow. You'll pay for this. You think you'll get away by roughing us up? I'm sorry that was necessary. Are you all right, Sheriff? Well, I... And I didn't break any bones in that fall. Good. What about you, Deputy? I'm not hurt, but what are you going to do now? I'm going to show you a letter. And I'm going to talk, and you three are going to listen. A couple of days ago, my Indian friend and I found a letter Mucho sent to a man named Pete Perry in Clarksville. Mucho wanted Perry to send him a safe back <laughs> After the sheriff read the governor's letter, the disguised Lone Ranger told the sheriff about the letter that brought him to Circle City. When he told what he had learned from Mucho, the surprised lawman exclaimed, yeah, You mean the loot from a couple of their robbers is hidden in the ranch house? That's what Mucho told me. And a poor cat's planning to add the Wells Fargo cash to it. Zeb, head for town. Get a posse together and take him to Mucho's place. Joe and Tex and I'll be waiting for you at the fork in the trail. It's about a quarter of a mile from that polecat's ranch. I'll be there, Sheriff. And don't what? waste any time. Get up, get up there. It'll be dark in half an hour. Move in in that place and take the gang by surprise. I'll join you at the fork in the trail, Sheriff. Easy, steady, big fellow. Well, where are you going? To meet my Indian friend, Tonto. He'll want to take part in this fight. Come Silver! <laughs> Darkness was falling by the time the Lone Ranger reached the hillside where he had left Tonto. He saw his friend's gear and the saddlebag containing his own clothing and guns. But Tonto was nowhere in sight. As he donned his familiar riding clothes and buckled on his gun belt, the Lone Ranger realized that Tonto must have been captured. Silver, Mucho and his men captured Tonto. We'll have to move without the sheriff. Placing his mask across his eyes, the Lone Ranger swung to the saddle. He's heading out. On, Silver! Darkness was complete when he drew rein at the corral a short distance from the ranch buildings. Leaving Silver Ground Hitch nearby, he went to the corral gate. He whistled softly. A moment later, Scout trotted to the Lone Ranger's side. Scout, old fella. Leaving the corral, the masked man hurried toward the lamplit ranch house. He entered the house and met Slim in the hallway. Hey, Mask, I, I thought I killed you. Sorry, Slim, but I haven't time for talk. You sound like Tex. Walk ahead of me to the living room. Remember, this forty-five is at your back. Wide-eyed at the sight of the Lone Ranger's mask, Slim stumbled obediently toward the living room. As he approached the doorway, Mucho called. Who is it? Answer him. Uh, it's Slim, Mucho. I told you to ride up the boys. And ride to the place where you left Shaq. Yep. Don't reach for your gun, Mucho. Slim, what's the idea? Who is this, Mask Man? Kimosabe. I knew you were here, Tonto, when I saw Scout in the corral. You're covered, Mucho. You better keep your hands up. I don't know, I'll cut those ropes. You too. Don't move. No. <laughs> no. Thanks, Kimosabe. Hey, boss, now I savvy this setup. When Joe Bone and I captured Tonto, we figured the Lone Ranger was nearby. Yeah. You mean this gent? He is the Lone Ranger? Yeah. That's right, Mucho. But you sound like that. Boss, what do we do? I call the boys. They kill you in this red skin, mister. Guess again, Mucho. You and your gang are through. You're loco. Hey, boss. Huh? A lot of rice.
Spider's heading this way. That's Sheriff Wade and his posse. Sheriff! Mucho ran to the window. The rising moon gave light enough to see the riders drawing rain outside. Mucho counted more than a dozen men. Then he saw the glint of moonlight on the sheriff's badge. No, no! He turned from the window. In a desperate effort to escape the justice that was coming, he grabbed for a gun on a nearby table. But the masked man saw the gesture. A silver bullet creased the outlaw leader's hand. At the sound of the shot, the gang rushed from the bunkhouse. But the sheriff's posse was waiting for them. Fifteen minutes later, Sheriff Ben Wade and his deputy Joe were in the ranch house living room with the Lone Ranger and Toto. Mucho and his gang were outside. All handcuffed and ready for the ride to town, mister. You and your men made good time getting here, Sheriff. Well, we'd have been here sooner if we hadn't waited a while for a gent named Tex. Tex never showed up. Well, he had other business to attend to. Uh, such as coming here and freeing Toto? <laughs> yes, Sheriff. I thought so. Toto and I will be on our way now. Where are you heading? To Clarksville. We have some unfinished business with a man named Pete Perry. Adios. 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 Thanks. Thanks a lot. Glad we could help you. Scouts in the corral, Toto. Uh, you'd be glad to see him. Sheriff, are you thinking the same thing I am? I might be, Joe. Tex and that masked man are one and the same person. Yeah, and the masked man's the Lone Ranger. Busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Say, you want to try Cheerios, the delicious food with go power. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Add milk and you've got just the breakfast to start a healthy, happy day. It's real muscle-building food. Every spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. So eat Cheerios. People will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. A copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.